Hi everyone, Jamie McQuaid from Magnet Forensics here with a quick video to show you how to use uh, Magnet Axiom and F-Response Enterprise to uh, create uh, and investigate a remote system across the network. A lot of people have been asking us uh, ways that they can conduct uh, remote investigations or remote acquisitions over a network. Uh, this is a really common use case for uh, enterprises or large organizations that uh, have an investigative team, um, but they may have offices in multiple locations and uh, they might not have forensic examiners in each of those locations. So connecting to those machines remotely uh, is an important part of their process. So uh, I'm going to use uh, two great tools, obviously uh, our tool Magnet Axiom, but also I'm going to incorporate uh, F-Responses tool, their enterprise tool, um, to show how that can be done um, and, uh, and how easy it is to, to do. So so um, I've got Axiom here, uh, Axiom Process up here, up and running. Uh, I'm not going to go into, de into depth in terms of how Process and, and uh, Axiom and uh, F-Response work um, as a whole, but I'm going to show how you can set those up and uh, use them together. Um, so first off, we've got our case details here. We've got evidence sources, and you know, you've got the standard computer, mobile cloud options here. So I can choose computer, and I can choose to acquire evidence. Now, I haven't done anything for F-Response yet, so right now, you've just got one hard drive here to acquire. This is uh, just a local hard drive that I've got connected to my machine. It's one terabyte in size. Um, very helpful and, and I could acquire this if I wanted to. Um, but I'm not going to focus on that right now. I'm going to focus on uh, a remote system and getting that to show up here and uh, allow me to uh, actually acquire it as well. So um, let's flip over to uh, F-Response first. And this is, like I said, is the F-Response Enterprise uh, um, product. Um, works really well, a really nice tool to, uh, to use and the guys over at Response are um, really helpful in, in terms of uh, getting it set up and uh, um, using the product. It's a very uh, simple, easy tool to use. Um, and basically what it does is it establishes a network connection for you. It's, uh, it basically will establish a, a read-only uh, secured network connection to a remote host uh, and you have a few options available to you. I've got one set up here, but basically what I would do to set this up, um, you could choose to either do a covert investigation where the user on the other side or in the remote system doesn't know that you're actually on their system, or overt and you can uh, you can just go into uh, go to the, directly to the system, plug in a USB and, and run the executable. Um, I've done that already. I would really just go to deployment. I can uh, export GUI subject executable and I can uh, uh, actually choose there's my, my local machine here, and this is where the license manager is. And I can say export or create uh, an executable that I could run on the remote system in order to, uh, to uh, actually have F response running on it. It runs a server agent type deployment. Um, so server being on my side, the agent running on the suspect's machine or the user's machine there. Um, so I've already done that. It's already up and running. Um, like I said, you could also do a covert one over the network. So if you weren't physically there and you didn't have access to it or you didn't want to know the, uh, the user to know that you were there, you could deploy that over the network using admin credentials as well as if, if you wanted to. Um, either way works. It's, it's totally depending on your investigation. Um, a lot of enterprise server agent deployments, people will deploy across in, in every computer in the enterprise, um, or you could do it ad hoc on a per computer basis. It's totally up to you how you want to do it, but F-Response can handle that. Um, so I've already got it up and running, so I just went over and ran that executable on the computer. Uh, you can see there's the remote machine, it's called MF Demo 2, it's just a demo laptop that I have sitting in another part of the office uh, waiting for me to uh, connect to it. Um, the IP address is there, I'm on the same uh, network as that one. And uh, what I can see here is the targets available to me. So these are the remote targets that I have available. You've got the physical disks, disk zero and disk one. You've got the PMEM, which is the physical memory for the computer, which is very important, valuable in a lot of investigations. And you've got the logical volume, C, D, and Q. Um, physical disk here, this is the actual main drive. So if I wanted to mount this, I just right click, attach target, and it will actually attach for me. You can see it's now mounted as physical drive two to my local computer now. Um, so I can actually run any tool I want against it. I can browse it, I can do whatever I want. But what I'm gonna do is I, I wanna uh, do a, a forensic uh, investigation to it. So I'm gonna keep it within my forensic tools. Um, I can also mount other things like the memory. So I can attach target for the memory. 
and we can see now that that's mounted as physical drive three. Great, I now have direct access to volatile memory and I can choose to acquire or analyze that as well. I can mount the logical volumes. Uh, disk one is actually just a USB device or a USB stick that I've got plugged into there. So the main drive is disk zero. Um, I can mount them both, but uh, I know there's nothing on there that I really care about, so I'm not going to. Um, from here, App response is all set up. It's all mounted, ready to go. Um, let me go to process. We'll go back to process here. And you can go back to evidence sources. We'll do the same thing. We'll go computer and we'll go acquire evidence. But now we've got three items to uh, here as opposed to the one we had at the start. We've still got the one terabyte drive that I have locally connected to my machine, but we've got two others. We've got disk zero right here, which I mounted, and the memory as well. So disk zero is about 250 gig drive here, and that's the remote drive uh, on the uh, demo laptop that I've got. And then there's the memory for it. So I can choose to acquire or analyze those remotely, but it just shows up as a local drive here. So let's do um, the memory first. Let's do a basic acquisition of the memory. So I'll do PMEM, I'll hit next. I'm gonna do a full raw dump of it, just a eight gig dump of that, uh, that memory. I'm gonna add it to my case here and it's queued up, ready to be uh, acquired over the wire. Now I'm gonna add, also go ahead and add the uh, um, computer as well, the, or the uh, hard drive as well. So let's go back to computer. Let's go back to acquire evidence. And you can see the memory is already queued up here. Let's add the uh, disk zero here as well. So we'll go next. Now I've got a few acquisition options, a few more here. One thing I'm gonna recommend is well, you could do a full physical dump of the entire disk, which works great. Um, the big challenge with uh, remote acquisitions, and this applies to any tool for that matter, is um, any remote acquisition, your bo biggest bottleneck is probably gonna be the network. Even if you've got a great network uh, infrastructure, um, you're pulling a lot of data. So even 250 gigs over the, uh, the wire can take a long time to do uh, forensic acquisition to it. So what I'll quite often I'll do, and this will depend on your investigation, is I will do a targeted acquisition of just what's mostly important to my case. Uh, we have a quick targeted acquisition option here, uh, which works great for this. Um, it's, instead of getting the full 250 gig hard drive, um, I'm gonna do a targeted logical acquisition of just the most important areas of that drive. And if you click more info here, you can see what that includes. So you can see for a Windows system, which this one is, it's a Windows system, it'll include the page file, hibernation file, the MFT, USN journal, event logs, setup APIs, all the registry hives, all the link files, and all the user profiles, which is where most of your user data is gonna be stored. So any, if there's multiple users, it'll get all of them. If there's one user, it'll get just that user's profile and prefetch files as well. So lots of good places to get. Uh, and that's gonna cover that 80 to 90% of what you would need for the average investigation. Um, so let's, uh, let's include that. We'll do uh, the quick targeted, add to my case here, and it's queued up, ready to go. So now from here, Great, we've got all the, uh, the uh, items that we want to acquire queued up, ready to go. I can add some processing information if I want to. So I can add keywords to search for, I can add hash lists, I can choose what artifacts I want to look for on those images. Um, but uh, we'll, I'll just leave the default. So I'm not gonna go into details here and it's ready to be imaged uh, as we go. So I hit analyze evidence. It will actually start and, uh, and queue that up. And uh, it will take some time. Um, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's doing a pretty decent size uh, uh, acquisition there. We'll do uh, the memory first and then the, um, uh, the hard drive itself as well. So once it goes through there, um, it'll go through, process it all, and you should get some really good results in the end. At this point, I'm gonna pause the video and we can uh, um, take a look at what it looks like on the other side. Okay, we're back. Um, the memory has uh, finished acquiring and processing. The, uh, the computer is still going through, but I figured I'd stop and show you guys what, uh, what we pulled out of memory. You can see we've got uh, um, examine opened up here, and we can now see that it's got uh, about 3,000 artifacts here, so just various things. Uh, you can see some cookies, some URLs and that. If you open up OS artifacts, you can get some of the link files we carved out of memory, uh, prefetch files that were found there. So you can get, uh, there's a, about a dozen of them there of uh, prefetch files or event logs. There's about 500 or so event uh, logs that were pulled right, right from memory there. So uh, again, this is from the remote machine. Uh, we used F Response Enterprise to connect. 
um, to the remote machine and then run Axiom to do an acquisition, a remote acquisition of the memory and computer and then processes that through and you can uh, you can see we've got some uh, some decent results on the other side. Uh, again, that's all I wanted to show, you know, a quick uh, uh, video, but uh, using F-Response and Axiom together to do remote acquisitions is actually a very easy task to do. Um, it's uh, all you need to do is uh, use both tools to one set up F response, use the establish the network connection, and then once F response is set up, it establishes that read only connection to uh, the remote host and basically makes it look like a, 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 a local computer or a drive that you can then run uh, Axiom against it. So hopefully that was helpful and uh, have a good rest of the day. Bye bye.